Topic four point Topic four point two light. So in this topic you'll be looking at A the reflection of light, B refraction of light, and C thin lenses. Reflection of light. So some terms you might need to know in this chapter will be the normal, an imaginary line perpendicular to the mirror plane. Angle of incidence is the angle between the incident ray and the normal. Angle of reflection, the angle between the reflected ray and the normal. So in this slide, I've shown you what it means, what those terms meant. So this dotted line here is known as the normal. The angle of incidence for is the angle between this normal and the incident ray over here. Angle of reflection is simply the angle between the normal and the reflected ray. Okay, so this diagram puts everything in the simple um, algebra form. So I is the angle of incidence, R is the angle of reflection, N would be the normal. So for reflection, the angle of incidence, I is always equal to the angle of reflection, R. So for normal reflections, you see that I is equal to R, and this is on a smooth surface. But for diffuse reflection, just as how I showed in the radiation chapter, the incident rays, they, uh, they incident on the surface, but because the surface is rough, and I equals to R, you take this for example, your I here is equal to R, Your angle of incidence for all the rays onto the rough surface are of all are all of different angles. So when they are reflected, they reflect into different directions because I has to be equal to R. So now I'm going to show. So now I'm going to show how to draw a virtual image. A virtual image is simply the image that you see in the mirror. So when you have a virtual image, the distance between you or the person and the mirror is equal to the distance between what you see, your virtual image, self and the mirror. And everything is proportional. So when you draw a virtual image, firstly you measure the distance between a point and to the mirror and then you do it the same okay sorry this is the real this is your real image the virtual one is over here because of the lines of the mirror so then simply you just follow the measurement and draw out your virtual image here. To be more accurate, you draw a point from your virtual image through this point here and your other point through here. And since it's a reflection, your angle of incidence and angle of reflection should be the same. So when you draw light rays from your real image from the mirror and away from the mirror, your dotted line here would represent, as you can see by the arrows, would re represent the reflected rays. So how do you draw a reflected and how do you draw light bouncing off an object into your eyes? So firstly, assuming that you see this dot in the mirror, you draw a, dot, a dotted line from this object here, I'll label it as O, 
perpendicular to the mirror. Dot, 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 dot. Assuming this is perpendicular. And then I will find the position of the image of the object O over here in the mirror. And I'll label it as O prime. So then I draw a reflected ray from this directly into my eye. So basically ensure that any lines you draw in the mirror is dotted. Unfortunately this is not really much of a dotted but take it as a dotted line and then you draw it out of the mirror and becomes a solid line into the eye. So this would be your reflected ray. So then you want the incident ray. You simply just draw a line over here into the mirror at this point at which the ray comes kind of comes out from the object here. So this is a diagram to show how incident rays and reflected rays are drawn when you're looking at an object in the mirror. Part B, refraction of light. So for refraction, again there are terms that you need to know. So the angle of incidence is the same thing as in the previous part of reflection. And angle of, of refraction will be the angle between the refracted ray and the normal. So for, for refraction, there's also an extra thing known as the refractive index as represented by n. So n represents the refractive index. So there are a few formulas to find the refractive index. The first will be sine i divided by sine r, where i is the angle of incidence, r is the angle of refraction. The next formula is n equals to the speed of light in a vacuum divided by the speed of light in medium. Over here, I have a diagram to show you what is the angle of incidence, angle of refraction, and the normal. So how refractions takes place actually is due to a difference in medium densities. So for example, if this is an air and this is a glass block, incident ray comes in through here, is refracted from this point inside the glass block. So for over here, this part where it comes out, this is your refracted ray. But over here, as the ray enters, it's coming out of the glass block, this, become your, this becomes your incident ray, and this becomes your refracted ray. So to make it easier to remember, incident ray is the ray coming in, refracted ray is the ray coming out. And the incident ray and the refracted ray can be the incident ray when the light is coming out of a more dense medium or less dense medium. So basically the transition, the terms incident and refracted ray are used in the transition between when the light when light is traveling in and out of a medium. Critical angle. So for refraction, there's this thing known as critical angle which is the angle of incidence in the optically denser medium for which the angle of refraction in the optically less dense medium is 90. I know this is a bit of a mouthful, but here I have a diagram to represent it for you. So basically the critical angle is this angle here, which causes your refracted ray to go along this horizontal line perpendicular to the normal. So this here is your critical angle. Total internal reflection is when light travels from a denser medium to a less dense medium. When the angle of incidence is greater than the critical angle, the ray will not be refracted, but instead will be reflected back into the denser medium. So for this, internal reflection is this. When your angle theta 1 is greater than the critical angle, total internal reflection would take place. Also remember that all of this 
is when you're moving from a dense medium into a less dense medium. So after going through critical angle, your next formula for n, the refractive index will be n equals to 1 over sine c, where c is the critical angle. So over here, here's another example, and a pretty good example also. So firstly, I'll talk about the critical angle. It'll be this point when your refracted ray is 90 degrees to the normal. And then over here, if you're wondering why does the light ray go straight into the glass block, semicircular block, and it's not bent. So the reason for this is because it is tangential and it enters the glass block in 90 degrees. So when you're entering a medium at 90 degrees, it is going along the normal and it does not get refracted. Thin lenses. So there are two types of lenses that you need to know. First is the convex lens, which looks like this. The second is the concave or diverging lens, which looks like this. So when drawing any ray diagram, convex lenses are usually represented by this, while concave or diverging lenses are represented by this. Terms that you need to know for this part will be principal axis, a line passing through the optical center O of the lens and perpendicular to the plane of the lens. Optical center O is the point midway between the lens surface on the principal, on the principal axis. The rays passing through the optical center are not deviated. The principal focus F is the point on the principal axis to which an incident beam parallel to the principal axis is made to converge. The focal length F is the distance between this optical lens and the principal focus F. So over here, just now I went through principal axis, optical center O, and principal focus F. So optical center O is here. The principal axis is simply this horizontal line. Focal point F is this point at which all the rays converge. The focal length is the distance between this point of optical axis and the focal point. The focal plane is the vertical plane in which passes through the principal axis and perpendicular to the principal axis. I mean, passes through the principal focus. So principal focus is this point, and your focal plane would be this line over here. This is your principal plane. I mean, this is your focal plane. Is at the point at which your focal point is. So here are some ray diagrams that you need to know for your syllabus. The first is when your light is at infinity and is coming when your object is at infinity and it forms an image. The second is when you have an object here and it is beyond 2f. So for example, it's O and it's beyond the 2F point, which is twice of F, and your image will be smaller. Take note of the characteristics. For O at infinity, it is real and inverted, diminish, and for between O and 2F, this point, it is also real, inverted, and diminish. For when it is at 2F, it is the same size. When it is between f and 2f, the image is magnified. And for between o and when o is at f, it actually depends. So this is not really that important, unless or usually they tell you to draw it out. But when it is between c and f, your image is again magnified. So this is a ray diagram for a diverging lens. So instead, your rays go out from the focal point and they do not converge anywhere. So now here's a question. Given that the refractive index of water is 1.34, find the critical angle C and find the speed of light in water. So for this question you're given N and you're given 
then you're given the refractive index only. So the formula you use will be n equals to 1 over sine. So you rearrange the equation to find c, and you get c equals to 48.3 degrees. Now to find the speed of light in water, you have to assume that the speed of light in air is 3 times 10 to the power of 8, same as that of a vacuum. So using this equation, you rearrange it and you get V water.